Okay, so here is an interesting eBay find that I really wasn't expecting to find on eBay for the price that I did. And this is model number CF-T4. This is one of the many tough book offerings to come from Panasonic. They've made numerous different models. Now over on this side of the computer it has two USB 2.0 ports, a Kensington lock, and behind this rubber door it has not only a 10100 Ethernet network interface card, but it also has a 56K dial-up modem installed, which is a feature I don't see very often in newer computers. And it's a good thing to have if your broadband service happens to go out for some unforeseen reason. Over on this side, it's actually a DC 16-volt uh, input. It's also got a VGA jack here for video, thankfully. Uh, and I can hook up an external monitor. It has what... I'm not quite sure what this is, an external peripheral connector here. I'm not sure I have to actually look into that, but the only manual I've been able to find online is just a very, very redacted copy. Essentially, it's a quick start guide. You can see that this computer actually has a hand strap here, as well as two rubber feet. And this being in the Toughbook lineup, it's really nice to have an actual hand strap that you can hang on to to bring this computer around and carry it and to utilize the touch screen. A lot of people say that you can use this in the book position where you read it, you have it open like a, an open book. You hold the hand strap in your left hand and you can use the touch screen and operate it using your right hand just like you would if you were to write or put some notes in, an, in a regular book. Now the RAM is located behind this door and the hard drive is located behind this door and I haven't actually discovered which kind of RAM that this computer actually takes. Now the seller actually sold this computer with the battery, but the battery was in untested as-is condition, so no guarantees as to its operation, but it's actually in perfectly working condition and I've gotten about four or five hours out of it. It does have a power switch here, it's not a power button, so a lot less chance of it getting pushed on if you have it in a laptop bag. And it does have a physical wireless internet on and off switch. I really like having a physical switch so I don't have to play around with uh, menus and settings in the computer. And then it has over here a three and a half millimeter uh, stereo headphone jack and a microphone jack which can also double as a line level input. Okay, so opening up, you push in this latch here. Trying to do this with one hand is not the easiest thing in the world. This computer does have a physical metal latch. It isn't plastic, but unfortunately that kind of is worthless because the computer itself uses a plastic locking mechanism that the latch snaps into, so this will probably break a lot quicker before the actual latch itself will. This laptop also has four rubber feet on it, which are there I'm assuming because based on the Panasonic reviews and what other people say is utilized so that you can actually close your laptop screen and not have to worry about the keyboard keys leaving marks on the actual screen because they're separated. The screen has a very small gap so it's not actually making contact with the keyboard. Now a lot of people have had complaints about the keyboard design on this laptop and for good reason. Panasonic definitely didn't stick to the status quo of laptop or even netbook keyboards, and they certainly tried some new things. They shrunk down the, key, the, the space bar, which was one major complaint by people. So they shrunk that down to accommodate another alt key, and as well as squeeze the delete key down here, which is very strange. Another radical departure from what we're used to, Panasonic decided to use a circular touchpad. It's not a rectangular or even just a plain old square touchpad. It's circular. And for those of you who are used to enabling and disabling scrolling function just by dragging your finger on the rightmost portion of the touchpad, you actually need to install a touchpad utility straight from Panasonic's website. And to be able to scroll up or down, uh, you actually need to swirl your finger clockwise to move down a page and counterclockwise to move up a page. So it does take some more getting used to, just like the oddly placed delete button, but it's not a huge deal breaker, at least for me. And unlike most laptops of recent times, this does have actual indicator lights for the various keyboard functions, caps lock, number lock, scroll lock, and the hard drive indicator light all have their own LEDs, so you don't have to rely on a software utility to tell you whether you have caps lock on. 
It does have an Intel Centrino Pentium M processor. It's Energy Star certified and designed for Windows XP. But on Panasonic's website, they give clues to the fact that you can actually install Windows Vista on here. So I don't know if I'll be able to install Windows 7 successfully, but for now I'll stick with XP. So let's go ahead and turn the computer on. I'm going to actually go into our BIOS. You click F2 to get in there. It's an Intel Pentium M processor running at 1.2 GHz. BIOS version uh, V2.5 L10. It's got 512 megabytes of RAM and a 60 gigabyte hard drive. And a feature I don't see in many computers' BIOSes is an accumulative operating time which tells you how many hours this computer has on it. So as of right now, 10,310 operating hours. Anyone want to figure out how many minutes that is? We have some controls in here for the function and control keys if we want to reverse it so that the function of these keys, uh, volume, brightness adjustment, etc., take precedence over the numbered F key functions. And we have a display setting for internal or external LCD preference. Display expansion is essentially what I just changed so that the screen expands when it's in a lower resolution mode. A major complaint a lot of people have with this computer is that its internal speaker as well as its headphone or speaker output does not go very loud and I can attest to that. This is playing at the full volume. You can see Windows Media Player's volume as loud as it can get and Windows XP's volume is as loud as it can get as well. And yet, if I play this song here... You can just barely hear the quieter portions of the classical song. One nice thing about this computer is that the previous owner installed Microsoft Office 2007. So I have Publisher, PowerPoint, Word, and Excel, a few other programs as well. And it's a licensed version, they just threw it in. A you know, a licensed version of Microsoft Office 2007 to sweeten the deal, so to speak. It's a Matsushita bio, uh, board, a Phoenix uh, BIOS. So the slot on board is 512 megabytes. Slot dim is empty. I gotta figure out what that means. And it takes a minute to load, and you can see that the entire website opens up just fine. It's still continuing to load. USA Today has a very bloated website, but even their website loads relatively fine. I can scroll, there's no jumping or lockups, which happens on this EPC where it'll just lock up and then the scroll will just jump up and down the page. Let's try watching a YouTube video. It hiccups a bit at the very beginning of the video, but then it plays just fine. No problems, no hiccups in the video, but the volume is just pitiful. It's as loud as it can go. So that's as loud as it can go. So you go back a bit from a laptop and you can just barely hear it. Alright, let's try watching it in full screen mode. still plays just fine. Of course, I don't think you're going to be able to play HD videos anytime soon on here unless you upgrade the RAM. But other than that, it works just fine. And of course, it being a 4x3 tall screen, it's letterboxing the video. Okay, so there's the battery info. We've got 3 hours and 44 minutes remaining at 54% capacity. I charged this about 3 or 4 hours ago and it's still got a perfectly good battery life little over half remaining. So there is the Panasonic Toughbook model CF-T4.